welcome to the Starlight Stitching Co. Floss Tube episode number 26. Today is Friday, November 17th. Welcome if you are new and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to come spend with me and see what I've been up to the last couple of weeks. I have finishes, not full finishes, but finishes, uh, several whips, quite a bit of haul, and quite a few giveaways from my Floss Tube Aversary episode number 25. So I know it's been a little bit longer than normal between videos, but I wanted to give people plenty of time to enter in for the giveaways. And as you can see from my lovely new background, we also have moved. So we are here, uh, we are mostly unpacked, there are a few boxes left. And I just pulled out the Christmas decor boxes, so we're going to be decking the halls this weekend and really getting into the Christmas spirit. So that's what we have on our plate today. If you see me looking down, I'm just taking a look at my notes to make sure that I don't forget anything. <laughs> okay, so how about we go ahead and dive right in with some finishes. And I guess this is kind of going to be part of the shop update portion too, because my first finish I have to share is, wow, you can really see through that, the Snowman's Christmas pattern, which is included in the October Club package. So my company is Starlight Stitching Co. and I have offered a club package for the last several years that includes a cross stitch pattern, a clutch or a handbag more recently, and other stitching extras that are fun. So I'll go ahead and include a photo of that in here, but it includes a paper version of the Snowman's Christmas pattern, a handmade uh, needle minder by Cotton and Clay UK, a handmade scissor bling that was handmade by me, they are not all the same, as well as floss drops from Floss and Blocks on Etsy, and the clutch or handbag with the snowman print. So hopefully you have seen those photos pop up somewhere over here as I've been talking. But that is my finish. It is not fully finished. Once again, we were moving. I, some things I still don't know where they are at, but it is so adorable. I've been in love with the borders on um, some of the bigger samplers. So I kind of wanted to evoke that feeling here with the fancy little border. And then you have a snowman and his friends next to a Christmas tree with a beautiful star on top. So I need to get this guy fully finished so I can have him out with my Christmas decorations. Now I also have kind of a surprising finish. Oh, I'm sorry, that was stitched on 14 count navy Ada. And with two threads over one Ada square, all as called for because it's my chart. <laughs> um, and I'll have those charts available probably beginning of December. I want you to be able to stitch it for Christmas if you so choose, instead of waiting until January. So I also have a little bit of a surprising finish. I did not expect to have this done. So I worked on the Silent Night pattern from the Primrose Cottage Stitches Religious Christmas Trio chart. And the reason I say it's surprising is because I started this intending to finish it for a Christmas exchange gift uh, with some of the ladies at my church later this year. And so I just started it earlier this week. This took me three nights to finish. Three. Look at how adorable that is. So I used some fancy flosses and stitched this on a little bitty scrap of 32 count raw gold linen by Zweigart. Two threads over two, except for some of the backstitch stars are one thread of backstitching. For the big star here, for this big star here, I used two threads. 
So what I'm excited about in my new crafting space here is I finally have windows. So I have natural light to show you all my stitching goodies with. So it's going to take me a little bit to get used to how I show that to show these things to you without glare or shadow from my overhead light. But this sweet little finish is done. And as I started stitching the manger, I thought this might be a little bit big for an ornament, but maybe not. Maybe it won't be. Yeah, that's not too big for an ornament, is it? Hmm. I don't know. So I had thought about stitching just the manger portion and finishing that as an ornament for my gift swap, but I really don't think it'll be that bad. So maybe I'll, since this stitched up so quickly in three nights, I will stitch one up for myself to have on my tree. Wouldn't that be nice? So those are my two finishes. Then I have my whips. Sad to say, I do not have my November birdhouse sample completed. Honestly, I think I've only picked this up one night since the last video. Um, I've been a little bit scattered, not sure what I want to work on. Um, again, we moved our entire household and, you know, there was packing and unpacking and I was tired most nights, spent more time knitting than uh, cross stitching just because, you know, knitting these muscle burr cats is just so easy and simple. <laughs> After you get past the increases, it's just knit, 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 and it takes less brain power. So when you're really tired, or at least when I'm really tired, something that takes less brain power is, is better. So I haven't made a whole lot of progress on this. I do have a goal of having it finished for you before my next video, but I'll pop up a picture of that here so you can see what that finished chart looks like as a digitally stitched pattern that is currently free on my website until December 1st. And I haven't even started charting the December birdhouse yet, but I'll have to get to that soon so I can get that out to you and so you can stitch it up for your decor. My next whip is a new start, and I'm sure you've all seen this. This is the, oops, don't wanna show the chart, quilted Christmas pattern by Emily Call Stitching. And I am stitching this larger snowman piece right here. I want to stitch all three. That's, that's one of my goals this year is to stitch all three. But I have started on the quilted snowman. And here is my progress. Maybe you can see them a little bit better in the natural light. There you go. So I have a snowman head and the first part of the body. Now I just have his big round bottom part to finish and a nose to fill in. I needed to uh, swipe a color from a different bag, which I haven't done yet, which is why I haven't done his sweet little carrot nose. But isn't this just adorable? I love it. And I am stitching this on an 18 count white opalescent Ada that I writ dyed with some aquamarine dye. And this is just out of my stash. And I am using a fancy floss color conversion just to use what I have in my stash. That amazingly is all I have for my cross stitch whips. Oh no, I have one more whip. Of course I have one more whip. Where did that Pardon me. <laughs> Still getting used to the new filming area. I think this will, that'll take a few episodes to get the hang of. So, of course, I am working on Let Love Rain by Teresa Pogut. This was my birthday start for this year. And I am stitching it on a 32 count raw silver linen by Zweigart. Stitching two over two. I am using my own color conversion, which I have shared on my Instagram. And here, here's my progress. Sorry, I'm trying to see what, what you see. 
So I've done a little bit more work over here. I added this green line over here and the grass and I'm working on building up this other house. I think the only part I have left of the house is to fill in the windows and then that house is done. So exciting. I also continued a little bit of the border here and did a little bit more on the leaves up here in this border. So I'm really focusing on this top section, stopping at this chain area to try to get that completely finished before continuing on moving down. And this is going to continue to be a regular companion. Um, I love stitching on it and just don't want to put it away. Okay, what next? Oh, I have a knitting finish. I have a knitting finish. So this is the muscle bird hat that I was working on. Here is the stitch marker that I moved during our last video. So I knit from here all the way up to the tippity top and finished it. So now this lovely hat is ready to go in with all the other Christmas presents to be wrapped. And it's in a lovely Malabrigo yarn in the color Escoria. It's beautiful blacks and grays and browns and just really a, a nice earthy feel to the colors. And you can see probably right about here is where I switched balls because this area here is quite a bit darker. You can almost see a line where that switch happened, which is okay. I suppose I could flip it around the other way because it's a double layered hat. So now this one looks, this way looks a little more even. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know which way I'll package it up. Probably the more even way because that is quite a stark line, isn't it? But it is pretty. So I had lots of knitting time this weekend. We went to see the Veterans Day Parade that they have here locally in Leavenworth, Kansas. Um, it at least used to be one of the largest Veterans Day parades west of the Mississippi. I don't know if that's still the case or not, but there were over 200 participants in the parade. It was two hours long watching all of the different floats and the fire trucks and the marching bands go by. Uh, there was a flyover of two army helicopters. I believe they might have been Blackhawks, but I, I'm not very good at identifying my army helicopters, so don't hold me to that. But either way, we had gotten down there early so we could park the truck on the street and watch it from the truck. So I had approximately three hours just to sit and knit, and knit, knit, knit away I did and got this little sweetie finished up, which I am thrilled about. Now there's enough yarn left, because you saw it was just the decreases portion on the second half that I had switched. So I might take this ball and the ball from my other Musselberg hat that was in a Malabrigo, uh, Cirrus, it's more of a blue color, and I might make one that's two-tone, like half one and half the other color, for another gift. Just to use up the yarn and not waste it, if, if I can find my other ball of yarn. I don't know where it's at right now. So my daughter has seen me knitting these Musselberg hats and asked me to knit one for her, of course. So she picked out this lovely, what is this, Lion Brand Mandala Ombre in the color Balance. So it started out with a blue and then a darker green and now I am on to the lighter green and then it fades to pink and purple and blue and green again. And this is a smaller hat since it's for a child. And even though I only started it three or four days ago, I'm not quite halfway finished with it. 
using it up so fast and I really am enjoying it and I think she will like her color fade hat. This is a very soft and squishy yarn and I really enjoy knitting with it so far. And I have it on a pair of interchangeable circular needles. I purchased a inexpensive set off of Amazon because I was tired of not having the right size and having to reorder sizes. Because of course the circular portion that I was using for the larger muscle work hats was not the right size for this hat. And then I went through about three or four different size types and sizes to, to find one that was working comfortably for me. So I ended up purchasing this sweet set off of Amazon. Again, not expensive. They're aluminum needles that you can interchange with different size cables. And it came with a seam ripper, some stitch markers, and some other things that I do not know what they are. And a needle gauge, which might come in handy not all needles are marked and it zips up in this hot pink little zipper case so I know it's not like the fancy chow goo ones but we'll see how well they work they were inexpensive and they solved a need I had at the moment okay that is all that I have for whips as I'm looking around Trying to make some room on the table here. Um, I wanted to take a moment to shout out a few of the floss tubes that I've watched lately. I, it's so much fun to share other floss tubes. Um, so you can find out about ones that maybe you haven't heard of. Or, I don't know, it's just fun. It's just fun. So some of the floss tubes I've been enjoying lately are Nest of Petals. Um, she has some lovely projects and has inspired me to start a few samplers, although I haven't worked on that one in a while. There's just too many amazing things to work on them all, isn't there? Ugh, I just can't. <laughs> I want to work on them all. Um, so Nest of Petals is a really good one. Um, if you're in for a laugh, Floss Boss and Cousins is always so much fun to listen to. Um... Jessica at Sweetwater Stitcher has some amazing projects. Of course, there's the amazing um, Tiger Lily Designs. Carrie always shows such fun projects and is always so bubbly and fun. She's one of the ones I really love to watch. Um, I also watched... There's so many good ones and I usually listen to them while I'm working so I'm really bad at commenting on them so I should I need to do better at that I need to do better at commenting on other floss tube videos um, what is it the sable stitchers the sable stands for stash accumulated beyond life expectancies that's just really funny <laughs> and they have some lovely projects that they share um, Bridget at the Museum Stitcher is another great one. And I'll try to link all of these below. And I'll also try to link that knitting needle set I got off of Amazon, just in case you're interested. It won't be an affiliate link because I, I don't have an affiliate with them. But uh, just to share some information in case you're interested. So now I guess I'm on to haul, right? Excuse me, I'm still a little uh, stuffy. So I guess a kind of haul is I made myself a tote and this is with a bunch of different scraps from a lot of other totes. So rather than just throwing away the extra pieces, I put them together into my own mishmash tote. So this is featuring the Teresa Kogut uh, Christmas fabric with the snowmen on the cream. Uh, I have some of the green dot fabric here and the green striped fabric for most of the binding, some of the Santa fabric for the handles, and then on the inside, I it, it really is a mishmash of extras. I have some of the Christmas Village fabric that I used for my pocket 
and some of the Merry Christmas Words fabric from Teresa Kogut. Some of the brown with spots for the inside binding. Green for the pocket and another piece of that snowman fabric for the back. So it really it was just little bits of extra pieces here and there from different ones all smooshed together <laughs> to make me a tote for my scraps because I very rarely keep one of the totes or one of any of the bags I make for myself. Most of them go out to other wonderful new homes because that is one of the ways that I support my family. So thank you so much for supporting my shop in any way. Oh, also, I don't remember if I mentioned this last time, but the cross stitch tote pattern is now available in my shop. I have finally got that finished. So it is a tutorial with pictures for every step along the way to help you make your very own cross stitch tote. There is a supply list with links to similar items to what you could use and also a link to a special video tutorial just for people who purchase the pattern to walk you through assembling your very own cross stitch tote. So that is now available in my shop and I will link that in the description box below for you. Maybe you want to whip one up for yourself or for a gift for someone else. Either way, thank you so much for supporting my shop. So now I guess I'm on to haul, aren't I? Okay, so let me grab this pile that's over here. I try to just shove all my haul items into um, this basket so I know that they're haul. Uh, I mentioned watching Virgin, the museum stitcher. She did a wonderful video on different types of floss storage. It was really nicely done, and I will try to link that below as well. But she swears by these Adam Hart uh, thread bobbins. They are acrylic bobbins. that you can loop your fancy flosses on in this large hole and then wind it around like a regular bobbin and it slides into a bobbin box. So I've been trying to figure out how to store my fancy flosses better and wouldn't it be amazing if I could get it to fit in the same floss bobbin boxes that I use for my DMC. So I purchased a set of those. I also, from Serious Stitches, purchased a set of their number stickers to put on the bobbins. So I have a color in cotton, I have a classic color works, and I have a weeks dye works. And those are all have the numbers associated with each of the makers flosses to stick on those bobbins. So that will come in really handy when I work to organize my fancy flosses. Uh, let's see what's this. I don't even remember what's in the sound. Oh, yes! So, from 141 Design Company, I ordered the Enjoy the Stitch kit. So, this comes with the floss and the tomato floss holder. Isn't that adorable? And as well as the box that the stitch goes on. So I am looking forward to doing that. I don't have any plans to start this anytime soon, maybe sometime next year or in January, but now I have it in my stash because I wanted to get the box while it was available. Um, next up, I did order a few patterns. Um, the Dwelling Place by Teresa Kovit. I saw someone's uh, whip progress on this pattern and decided that I needed to add that into my stash ASAP. So I paused the video, went over to Etsy and found the pattern and you know nothing can ship alone. So I also ordered this Blackbird Designs The Winter Is Past pattern. Isn't that beautiful? All the blues. I love blue. Blue is my favorite color. And while I was on there, I was looking in the fabric and I ordered this piece of 36 count linen from
from the Crafty Grimlikin. And the color is Graveyard Mist, Lape and Loops, and the size is half a yard. So my intention was for this to be for the Dwelling Place sampler. So here is the piece of fabric. It is lovely. It's a pale color. Kind of hard to describe um, and kind of hard to capture in this varying lighting here. There's some slight modeling to it. It almost has like a gray purpley modeling on a white. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. And I think it will work perfectly as that background for the dwelling place. Next, I received my kit from Excuse the Crinkle Face. I just kept everything in the bag. Uh, for the Hello from Liz Matthews class at the Jingle Ball, the festive mini wreath banner. So I ordered the kit version of the class and it seems to have come with quite a few things. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they are all used. I don't know if I'll be able to be in like the stitching rooms for the Jingle Ball a bunch, but I am definitely looking forward to that class to see how those are put together. Um, I think I already shared this as haul, but I purchased The Light of Winter by Brenda Gervais, and I took some time the other day to kit it up, and this is all from Stash. I'm trying to use as much Stash as possible. After just moving, I have realized I have a lot, a lot of craft supplies. And I moved into a smaller space and I want everything to be tidy and nice and put away and not have bins and boxes everywhere like I do right now. So I'm trying to pull from stash as much as possible. So I have, have a scrap of 32 count raw gold linen from Zweigart that is just the perfect size. And I have pulled a variety of fancy flosses that are similar to the called for colors. Some of them may be just a little bit brighter, I don't know. Um, I didn't have all of them to compare to, but those are my colors. And I think I'm going to wait until the first day of winter to start this, since it is called the light of winter, and stitch it throughout the winter time. I also have so many whips, and I want to work on them all, and that's really the problem I'm struggling with right now, is deciding what to stitch. I feel like I keep flitting around here and there and not making much progress on anything. I can't be the only one that does that, am I? Um, I also purchased some patterns from Primrose Cottage Stitches. So this is Christmas Trees and Stitching Please. Of course, I had to get this pattern. Uh, Christmas Quaker which is a really adorable pattern. I have the Autumn Quaker and I've actually done a small start on it, but I honestly haven't picked it back up again since then. <clears throat> but this one is really adorable. And on Colorado Cross Stitcher's Instagram, she shared a version of this that is stitched in multiple colors, like a red, a gold, and a green, and it looks so beautiful. So I saved that and I think those are the colors I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to get to that this year or not. It is already almost Thanksgiving, folks. How is it already almost Thanksgiving? I feel like I'm already running out of time for Christmas stuff. I also picked up the Basket of Cherries by Blackbird Designs. Luminous Fiber Arts, counting is hard because that is oh so true. And that sweet little bluebird. Uh, Blackbird Designs Little Birds sampler. Isn't that pretty? All the sweet little details. It's really the borders that get me. I love the borders. They're just so pretty. 
And then Merrily Merrily We Welcome Spring by Blackbird Designs. And then I have a few more. Uh, Faith of the Heart by Brenda Gervais. This reminds me of the birds from Rejoice Evermore. And it says, God finds a low branch for the bird that cannot fly. Beautiful quote. And then Quaker Handwork by Brenda Gervais. I think I saw a floss tube recently where somebody had switched up the colors of this. I wish I re could remember who it was because it was beautiful. I think they had switched up some of the reds for blues. But either way, it is a stunning pattern. When I stitch it, I will not be stitching it in these colors. I want to change up the colors as well. But I don't know when I will do that or what I will switch it to. And then my last piece of haul is the Madeline quilt pattern. Uh, last time I had shared, I purchased some Lori Holt was it hometown jelly roll fabric that I had intended on making striped curtains with. I've since changed my mind on that. And I want to use those jelly rolls to make a new quilt for our camper because we need one that's a little bit of a funky size in there. And I want to make one of those this winter. I don't know when. I don't know when I'm going to find the time to quilt. I don't have that much time to spend on it right now, but we shall see. I guess I'll have to, otherwise we're going to be kind of cold in the camper, aren't we? And my last piece of haul is something super fun. This arrived yesterday. If you know, you know. It's the Tiger Lily Advent Box. And I admit, I did just open it up, whoo, open it up this far, and that's it. So now, I have to wait until December 1st to start opening up the amazing goodies that I know are inside. So Tiger Lily made it so you know it's going to be awesomeness inside. Um, I wish I had the money and the space for her Keeper Club. I see everyone sharing those and they're so beautiful. Okay, so now I guess we're on to giveaway. So this is going to be from... Floss tube number 25, my floss tube anniversary giveaway parade. And I, if you are a winner, I need you to send me an email at the email address listed in the description box below. Let me know uh, your mailing address so I can ship these out to you because these are all physical items. Okay? And I will pop up the comments over here as I read them off. This video is going to be lots of fun to edit. So first up in the giveaways is two chances at the Stitching with the Housewives Let's Go Ride a Bike pattern. And those winners are Becky Reed and Carmen Charles. Just a reminder, these are your YouTube usernames. Next up is the October Calendar Crate. And that goes to Flower Girl. Then we have the set of This is Halloween and Hello My Pretties. Both of these patterns. And the winner of that is Carol Ann Brake. Next up I have the Shannon Christine Trick or Treat pattern with the called for floss. And that goes to Larni Tikar. I do apologize to anyone if I am pronouncing your name incorrectly. I'm doing the best that I can. Next up is the Hey Heifer and Ho 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 spoken here, as well as these heart clips. And the winner of that is Brenda Johnson. Next we have Santa's Ride and the Christmas Shop. And that goes to Robin Selby One. Next we have Hello Frosty and Hello Santa. And the winner of that is Janelle Daly. I'm sorry if I'm going through these kind of fast. 
Next we have Winter Petites and Mary Snowman, and that winner is Patsy Stockmeyer. The next pattern is The Night Before Christmas, and the winner of that is Cindy Hofflinger. Now we have Smitten and Stocking Full. Those patterns go to Jeff Colvin. Next is the Ink Circles Circular Logic pattern, and that goes to Misty Smeltzer. Next is Rejoice Evermore, and that goes to Patsy Stockmeyer. The next is the Witch Frame with the Bat Accent and the Little Pumpkin and Bats and Ghosts. I don't know what those are called. Um, and that goes to Becky Reed. Next is the Liberty Box and Contents, and that goes to Barbara Borkowski. And last but not least, I'm glad you can't see my pile here. <laughs> it's pretty big. Last but not least is the Love Note Project Bag, and that goes to Amy Abraham. So if you are one of those winners, uh, please send me an email at the email address listed below with your physical mailing address and uh, I will get those mailed out as soon as possible. So next up I have a bit of a shop update. Um, I don't have any of the physical items to share with you because I have shipped out absolutely everything that is currently finished. And I am working away on more as we speak. Well, not as we speak, because I'm sitting in front of the camera filming a video with you. <laughs> but during my working time, I am working on making more. So I will insert pictures here of the items that I do still have available. Um, from the November 1st released, I still have some of the presents handbags available. Um, I also have several of the Christmas Village totes from the November 15th release still available. And that's pictured here. I really love that Christmas Village fabric. Wouldn't that be perfect for one of the larger projects like the Nutcracker Village or Glitter Village or um, Kringles? One of the ones where you're doing like either a big house or a whole bunch of little houses. Wouldn't that be adorable? Mm. I might have to set aside one of the Christmas Village ones for me. I went to Stitch Glitter Village. I've had it kitted up for a couple of years now, I think, at least over a year. And I do want to stitch that at some point. Maybe I'll have to set aside one of the Glitter Village totes. Um, I don't know if I have any of the snowman totes left available or not. Um, I only had enough fabric to make eight of those, but um, you can check in my shop. It'll show accurate inventory quantities. <laughs> and I also have the club packages available. I have a whole bunch of the clutches already done. They're ready to go. I have to make a few more of the zipper pull, or not the zipper pull blings, oh, more of the scissor blings, um, but then those are ready to ship. And I am working on a batch of the handbag versions with this latest round of handbags. So those will be ready to ship soon as well. So I'm trying to get caught back up to where I can ship immediately after you order instead of making them to order. Or be very close to having them done when I release them. Um, the club packages always throw me off a little bit as well as you know, there was lots of work getting ready to move and everything that goes with that. <laughs> it's been a lot lately. So I'm working really hard to try to get caught back up. I do appreciate every single one of your orders. You are helping me provide for my family. And with that, I think I'm done. I'm getting a little bit rambly here. Uh, so the next video 
will be after Thanksgiving, so I hope that everyone has a fabulous Thanksgiving with their family and friends. I know I'll be working on making our homemade noodles probably tomorrow morning. I think that's a, I think that's a Saturday thing, <laughs> making noodles. It's quite a process. Um, and then decorating for Christmas, because Christmas is coming up really soon. Super exciting. I don't know what I want to stitch on. I have so many things I want to work on. That seems to be my problem lately. I just want to do it all, and, you, and I can't. There's only so many hours in the day, right? <laughs> so I have to pick. Maybe I need to just assign myself, like, this is either one or two things are what I'm working on, and that's that. But then if I do that, I always want to work on something else. So, I don't know. I guess I'm just scatterbrained a little bit. <laughs> Comes with the territory when you've moved, I guess. So, um, I will do a craft room tour at some point. I'm not quite ready for that yet. I still have a pile of boxes that I'm staring at behind the camera and some bins and things that need to find new homes first. But I will definitely do a craft room tour in the near future. So thank you so much for watching and for joining me for a little chat about what I've had to work on lately. I hope you have a fabulous weekend and next couple of weeks and get plenty of stitchy and crafty time in as well as family time with Thanksgiving. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.